We are live with the watch along. Uh, Jack's on the stream as well. Jack, how you doing this uh, Saturday evening? Fantastic! That little like intro video there got me hyped. I was I was I was ready to go, but now I'm even more ready to go. That was sick. <laughs> working on it. We're, we're working on technical difficulties. I'm trying to get Jack in the stream OBS, but he's on the call nonetheless. Um, yeah, game is game is ready to start here. Uh, let's quickly go through the lineups. Uh, boom, there's a the lineups here. Uh, release Frazzle is in goal. We go with Ovion, Itakura, Paulson, Taroda, obviously, Salazar, Bulter, Rantful back on the right hand side with Malik Tiao, Kaminsky, and Mikhailov is getting the start in this one. Mm -hmm. Uh, thoughts on the lineup? Yeah, really just Drexler and, and Iden, right? Who who got who got dropped, obviously uh Island because of that injury issue. Um, so yeah, central midfield. We haven't really seen much of Mikhailov so far this season or not like a huge sample size at least. So that'll be, I think the main point of interest for me. Yeah. Um, I mean, Ranful, we kind of understand the game there uh, in, I guess, you know, with another full 90, we can see if he, he does anything that impresses us or kind of, you know, stakes a claim to that position. Although I'm not really holding my breath for that, but yeah, it should be uh, in general, pretty, pretty stable. What we would expect. Yeah, no, absolutely. And uh, so we'll see how the lineups go. The kickoff is just about to begin here. Uh, let me switch over my screen here so we can get the little um, screen action going here. It'll be hard to see on mine, but let me adjust it here. So psh, there we go. All right, looks like we're off and going, Jack. Uh, this should be it. Should be an interesting game here. It's a uh, a game where we're what three points off the top of the table, not including what's going on around the league. Uh, Dresden, they're mid table ish, and uh, they can be had. We're at home. We should get this. The crowd is going nuts. As you yeah, dude, see. the Nord curve is fucking. North you know, is also jumping yeah. right now. Yeah. Uh, for those watching in our live stream, thank you for joining us tonight, watching the uh, the game here. Uh, it should be a good one against Dynamo Dresden. It, it, I, I love this already. Oweon already, you know, <clears throat> making a very direct play uh, initially and now some high ball pressure, forcing a turnover. I mean, not a, you know, but forcing it out within a couple seconds here. And I could look at that. Look at the North Corv. It's just crazy at the moment. I love it. I'll, I mean, this is a big boost for us having the crowd back because I think it impacted us so much, probably more than any other team not having the fans there. Yeah, I mean, everyone had to play through those conditions, but especially when you have, you know, a stadium like the Veldens Arena with, with you know, what's what's considered to be a pretty nice home field advantage to the extent that you want to say that that exists in soccer. Uh, yeah, I mean, it definitely takes a huge part of it away. And um, I think it also, you know... It, not that the not that the players didn't understand what they were going through and you know like what, obviously what they needed to do obviously that was very clear to them but um it, maybe it's a little bit harder to <clears throat> to kind of overcome and come out of those slumps when there's just dead silence in the stadium week after week and you know you don't have people that are kind of pushing you on and spurring you on to some of the fan support which we know can always be a big factor so um yeah it's really nice to see the last couple weeks especially you know some fuller crowds coming back yeah no no it's absolutely a, a help to us no doubt about that all right, looks like we get the ball here through the midfield. Back to Ovion, and he's going to hit it back to the goalkeeper here. So good early pressure by Dresden. Let's see how you know how this starts to unfold as, a, as the match goes on. Um, but controlling possession. Oh, as soon as I said that, we turn it over. <laughs> oh, Dresden guy goes down to the box. No call, thankfully. If you're joining us in the, in the live stream, the watch along, tell us where you're watching along from. Uh, be happy to find out where everyone else is. I know most people we, we get here is from uh, U.S. and Canada, but there are some Germans that join us, and we'd love to find out where you guys are listening in from. So, I'm actually drinking beer today, Jack. A little Wisconsin action going on. What do you got, New Glarus? What's going on there? Yeah, yeah, Spotted Cow. There you go. Spotted Cow, there we go. So It's a Wisconsin classic for sure. Yeah, I actually I took a six pack to my buddy's house, and he's like, "Dude, I want more." I'm like, "You're gonna have to go to Wisconsin for that, bud." It's for those watching. We're watching on a phone. You can barely see it right now, but uh, trust us, it's going on. Yeah, that's why I'm like staring down like a cross screen at my phone sitting on my table. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Shalka's playing a little sloppy at the moment. Every time they make a pass, it seems to be turned over at midfield there. Here's something. There we go. Ooh. Over the top to Bolter, looks like. Here we go, Bolter. Oh, corner kick. Ah. At the moment, FYI, it feels like my stream is maybe like five seconds ahead, so I'll try to uh, be quiet and, and limit the uh, 
No, that's fine. That's fine. Responses until something you know until you catch up. <laughs> I, I find that my stream is usually faster than like people in Germany too. So, it but given how our streams have been going, one one or both of us may cut out at multiple points during this yeah. match. Yeah, hopefully both not at the same time, right? <laughs> All right, corner goes in, and the keeper gets it. Foul on the keeper. Oh, Malik. Love that though, man. Got to make him work for it. Yes. Never let the goalkeeper grab the ball cleanly. You got to challenge him. I mean, yeah, you put, have put to. some kind of body part on him. Extract the toll, man. I mean, yeah, do this. Doing some technical stuff in the background here while I'm trying to get this going. All right. There we go. Multitasking is always fun on these things. I'm glad you're on to help me distract. You know, you can talk while I try to work in the background here. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I'm doing a nice job covering down there on the left-hand side. Look like we've gotten beaten there, but decent recovery. Yeah. Ooh, Toroto goes down. Play on, so it's a rough. Oyan, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, Toroto is sitting on 153, tied for the record. Uh, I know that's got to be – whenever any player is on a verge of breaking a record, uh, they always seem to tighten up, struggle a little bit more. Obviously, he didn't score last game, which is odd for us, right? He usually scores every game. Uh, hopefully, he can get it tonight to get it off his chest and then move, continue on with the season, right? Yeah, nice. To, it would be nice to do it in front of the uh, <clears throat> the home crowd as well, I would imagine. So, yeah, better yeah. than doing that on the road. No, I, I agree 100%. All right, current possession is 50-50, as you'd imagine. I mean, we're only six minutes into the game here, so uh, not much going on still so far. We got the lone shot of the game so far. I guess, it, yeah. I guess you want to call that a shot. It was just a air ball to the goalkeeper. Who's that on the ground? Was that Mikhailov or Ranful? Ranful. Yeah, he was fouled. Forget your five seconds ahead. <laughs> So it's interesting, you know, Kaminsky is starting to grow more and more into this defense uh, as becoming a almost no doubt starter along with Tiao and, and Itakura. I mean, once Sane comes back and fit, if he's not already fit, it's a tough tough decision for Gramozzi. It's like, do you mess with that? Do you keep it as is? Do you bring in Sane because he's a talented player? What do you do? You could even play Sane as a six, you know, depending on how that situation is going with, you know, whoever's back there. Yeah, I mean... <clears throat> Unless there's something going on behind the scenes in terms of, you know, a conversation about whether or not Sene is going to actually play for us at all this year or something. But presumably, let's say, you know, he ends up getting healthy and actually is going to come back into the squad. You have to think he would walk into the squad almost. And I know there's some yeah. people that say like, yeah, well, maybe, you know, you uh, you value him in possession and sort of like Kaminsky's passing ability more than, than Sene because some people feel like that's like a weak part of Salif Sane's game. Um, but I don't know. I, I find... I find that a difficult argument to make. I mean, we'd have to see how it goes, but I would imagine he would walk back in. Yeah, and it would probably be for for Kaminsky, I would think. Um, and part and part of that too is just like Sonny's got he's he's rangier. Um, yeah, Kaminsky yeah. hasn't been bad defensively, but some of the some of the moments where he looks a little bit more shaky is when is when something happens that's a little bit further out from goal because he doesn't have the pace to cover anything. Um, he, even he got caught out a couple times last game. Even you know as good as he was for the most part, there's a couple times further away from goal where he got himself into trouble. So. Um, I feel like Sané is a little bit more of a safety blanket in that area. And I wonder because obviously Sané is a more talented player than is Kaminsky, but Kaminsky brings so much from the offensive standpoint with the passing ability, getting out of jams, composure on the ball. Can Sané bring that? We obviously know he's, he's a rock back there defensively, but can he contribute enough offensively? Uh, would you want Itakur out from that middle position? You know, it, it's so many questions, you know, if you were to bring in Salif Sané back into the lineup. Personally, Personally, I feel like he can. Um, I, I believe I believe in him in that way. I think he can do that. Uh, right. The thing that would be, I guess, interesting for me to see though is like, to the extent that people think that he that he isn't good at that or isn't capable of doing that, how much of that is colored by sort of the general performances of the team over the past year and a half um, in a system where we struggled to maintain possession and, and link a couple passes together at all anyway. And we're, you know, under more pressure than perhaps we otherwise might be. And, and I feel like him coming into like a Bundesliga two side 
um, would potentially be different in terms of the amount of pressure he would be under under the ball for the most part. Because we, we, we seem to have been relatively comfortable as a whole. Um, right, right. I feel right. like for, for most of the season back there, that hasn't been a huge issue for us. And so I'd be surprised if like Sané comes in and then suddenly it's a big issue for us, you know? No, 100%. I 100% agree about that. I'm tweeting. Um, I'm responding to somebody on Twitter. Someone's asking how you can watch the game. I'm trying to tell them where they can uh, find that game. Uh, you only have to break a couple of different laws. And uh, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Maybe some bestiality involved. No mm. comment on that. Wow. <laughs> I've said worse. Maybe not on this podcast, but I said worse. <laughs> All right. Free kick comes in. Easily caught by a frazzle there. Uh, we haven't been threatened so far. See, I mean, um, like, just real quick, what, what, what Oyan just did there, too. I mean, like, that play didn't work out, but, like, his first touch is basically, like, in attack mode immediately, immediately yep. turning up field, playing yep. a ball, and making a run off of it. There's no hesitation there. He's not messing or Oh, he just falls down there. That's not great. <laughs> right as I was praising him. Oh. A little slip that almost cost us, but we're good. And I think that's a big difference between what we've seen in the last couple seasons, right, is, like, the – Whenever the left back or whomever, when as soon as you get the ball possession, we think defensively and hold it up. Oyan is immediately thinking offensive, which is great. And all the players really defenses act like they're all very active in their passing. Um, it's much more attacking style this year as opposed to last year, for example. Who was it had just been advancing the ball with the right field? Was that Ranful? Yeah. Who, yeah. See that. It's a little bit frustrating just because we had, you know, a decent move developing there, and he just kind of takes a heavy touch and and mistimes it and allows the defender to jam him and kind of break that whole play up. And you know, when you have somebody making a full sprint on the opposite side of the pitch, like I would just want us to switch the ball there quicker or not give it away that cheaply. That's unfortunate. Oh, yeah. that's a nice touch actually. So for those listening in, we are not watching. Here we go. Dresden is an opportunity. Saved by Frazzle. We're in the 11th, going into 12th minute now in the game. 0-0. Zero, zero. Game's been pretty even. Not many chances either way. Uh, really a lot of turnovers going both way. Uh, sloppy play, I think, is a, is a, the main game of this so far. Well, we don't want to lose to a team in black and yellow. So uh, hopefully that Absolutely gives not. you know, 5% extra motivation that we need to pull this one over the line. But Should have just pretended that they were uh, that team, the other black and yellow teams, for a little extra motivation. But... It's Faitalia. You don't need any more motivation, right? Shouldn't. Shouldn't. Yeah, I'm not too upset about not having to go up against like Jude Bellingham this season. So, <laughs> uh, Big big Tweez here says, how are you guys watching any live stream links? I just signed for ESPN Plus. think they stream Bundesliga, but they don't. So that's actually a good point. So ESPN does have Faitalia. Unfortunately, they only do the game of the week. And Schalke has only been the game of the week once. And that was the opening weekend against Hamburg. So what the ways you have to do it is you got to be creative. Um, obviously, the main way you want to do it is Shaka TV, but it may not be the easiest thing to try to get Shaka TV. And then you got to get really creative. There's a couple ways, right? You can either do the old Russian link, find that that sketchy stream that you find somewhere, or the other sketchy way you can do it that we do is you get a VPN and you use something like One Football. You know, both those Express VPN and One Football should be sponsoring us, but they're not yet. Uh, but uh, those are excellent ways to get the stream. We get a great stream, by the way, and so that's how we recommend. And the last thing I would leave you to is if you want to listen to the game, you can either use TuneIn, the TuneIn radio app, or you can go to Shaka's website, listen to the game completely free. It's in German, but it's free. So at least you can hear the ebbs and flows of the game and hear when the goals happen if you do not understand German. Huh, Jack? Yeah, it's been an expensive season for us, just in terms of uh, having to pay for every single game that we're watching uh, yeah. this year via the One Football app. But at least that gives you, as we said, um, what is generally speaking a pretty stable stream. Not that there haven't been issues, but it's not as if you're, uh, you know, clicking out of sketchy ads every ten seconds on some random, yeah, uh, you yeah. know, rabbit yeah. hole link there. Uh, some, some Russian advertisement, right? <laughs> the, the Gazprom link. There you go. There you go. <laughs> That should be a thing. It should be a thing. Dresden, Dresden maintaining some of this high pressure. Um, yeah. So I mean, they are they are forcing um, us back a little bit and uh, forcing some some kind of sketchy long balls at times, which is like that ideal. one. Yep. Turnover by Frazzle, another in the box. Good tackle by Tiao. Yeah. But you tackle. get mine. Frazzle has to be in there because his distribution so much better than Fairman. I'm, just I'm sorry. <laughs> You're very welcome, Big. 
<laughs> what one data point yeah yeah so yeah i mean dresden is pressing very nicely there we had two two of our center backs with the ball in possession they had three guys on our center backs uh and then really they forced the pass back to frazzle which led to the turnover because of that high pressure we usually are the ones uh initiating the, the high press and we haven't done it so far because we honestly haven't got past the midway point which is pretty sad considering this is a mid-table team in dresden but we clear away the corner kick they just had by Dresden. It's still, though, in their position. Yeah, I mean, I think we need to settle down a little bit. I, th I feel like we're still kind of in a little bit of a overly frenetic stage of the game. And I think yeah. hopefully maybe within a couple of minutes, we, the, the pace might get a little bit under control. It looks like it's heading that direction right now. Would you not agree that maybe this the Torado record is looming over all their heads, that they all want him to get the record so much that they're playing just slightly off than what they're, they had been playing in terms of consistency and normalcy? <sighs> I mean, who's to say? I really hope that's not the case, though, because like if I if I were on that team, I wouldn't worry about it at all. Because the way he's been scoring, you know, it's going to no matter again. what. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not going to like go out of my way to to you know try to make that happen or have that be uh, affecting some of the decisions that I'm making on the pitch in terms of where I'm going with the ball, what kind of chances I'm trying to create. Um, I think if Schalke just play their game, there's going to be opportunities that fall to him because he just that's a good ball from Torada. As oh my goodness, Bolt. So you're five seconds behind. That's. Both are just absolutely shanked something, but that was a so lovely, lovely ball in behind from Torada there. And we talked about how unselfish he is, right? He's not always going for goal. He sets up people all the time, and this is a brilliant yeah. play where he over the top to Bulter and Bulter looked like he may have been off, but uh, yeah. And this is why this is part of the reason I love him too, because we've said this all season. Is like first of all, great body control and balance in a lot of different situations, but he has good vision and is un and he's able to link up with people and, and play some of those balls in. He already has a couple assists this season, um, and uh, I mean that's. I mean, if you had like a creative midfield type player like playing that ball, you would have been all you've been like stoked about it all over it. And it's just that's your striker doing that as well. So he's not. Yeah, he's not only just, you know, a statue in the box where chances fall to him. He can he can do things for you outside of the penalty box area, you know, and, and create things in different areas of the field. No, 100 percent agree about that. Uh, Brian is following along with us on on Twitter. Thank you, Brian, for joining in on, on the call from St. Louis. So we got some we got some fans all over the place. I love it. I love it. So while you do that, I'm gonna try to get some people on Facebook to join us here. While you do that, I wonder if the Amsterdam Tavern is able to show the uh, let's fight the Bundesliga games on the TVs. And if not, they could show in our streams, right? <laughs> all right. Let's see. Uh, da -da -da -da. I wish there was like one bye week so that I could like go to Amsterdam Tavern and watch a game when Schalke isn't playing. Because every time I travel for a Schalke game, we lose horribly. As you know, this, this is a long standing curse on the Schalke America podcast. But and it's not held just to Schalke, apparently. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's correct. <laughs> yeah, I went to uh, visit my buddy Reed at the University of Iowa. Um, is that last weekend? Time goes by so yep. fast. I don't even know. Yep. And uh, yeah, they were the, uh, what, number three team in the country playing an unranked Purdue. And uh, I ruined that one for him as well. So yeah, anytime I travel for a sporting event, um, the preferred team uh, shits the bed, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, trying to share this. Hard to share. I've... I rarely use Facebook on the on the website. I usually use it on the phone. So I'm like, how do you use this? I don't get this. I don't understand. So it's all right. I'm surprised to hear that, Richard. You're a boomer. <laughs> uh, apparently, I am. <laughs> oh. Boomer sooner. Speaking of that, what's the score of the Kansas game right now? They were up 10 nothing against Oklahoma at halftime. 10 nothing. Yeah, KU was beating Oklahoma 10 0 at halftime, which was oh wild. Oh my goodness. Jeez. All right, let's see. My, my beloved KU, one of one of the worst college football programs in the country. <laughs> it doesn't surprise me. The team is uh in shambles. They're in shambles. <laughs> So when I don't talk, my mic, I got this new microphone, right? I mean, and I love it. It's the Elgato 3. But when I don't talk, it, it 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 turns the volume up so you can hear other sounds. And so it picks up the game. I don't know if you can hear it in my microphone, but yeah, uh, <laughs> I'll try to mute myself like that. It's all good. Uh, okay, back to the game. Back to the game. That's, that's right. showbiz, baby. That's what we say. This is live television. 
anything can happen and everything usually does. Like I said, trying to get you on the mainstream that I'm on, but it looks like you're sort of in there. Yeah, well, that's my fault for running out to get coffee right before the stream, so we didn't have time to like try to, uh, you know. Play well, I should have tested anything. this before I did it on game day, you know. Amateurs, what is this amateur hour? All right, looks like a throwing for Shaka, at least for me, on my view. Yeah, I'm at about uh, <clears throat> 1850 in the stream. Okay. Oh, you're, yeah, yeah, five seconds. Yeah. I'm now at 1854, 1855. Oh my goodness. Oh, whew, Salazar. Oh, I get so excited when I hear you go. Here we go. Yeah, like, no, yeah. T -t -t Tarada brought that down and, and dipped it out for, for Salazar, and he just absolutely got a hold of one, hit it low, kind of curling off the post. Off the unfortunately. post. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he really nice hit from him. Yeah. It had power, it had placement. I think if it was on on target, I think it would have gone in because I don't think the keeper reacted quick enough for that. It's nice from Paulson there to get out of the corner. Cut it back, cut it back. Good what is that ball? Who was that? Oh wow. We got we got away with that one. Oh, oh, oh way on, you beautiful man. Oh. Wow. Goal, baby. Goal. I, I don't was that was that Bolter or was that Rand? Who had who was taking the ball know. into the box initially? Whoever did that, like, should have cut that back for one or two people, didn't play to the cross goal. And luckily, you know, it got deflected out and Oweyan was able to um to get there first and clean it up. That's a really actually kind of difficult finish. He had to Paul, you have a perfect time. You just joined us right when the goal happened. Yeah, that was a crazy that was a crazy play. I, I, I was gonna say what you said that. No one was back door for the open play, but it ended up getting to Oleon and it kind of deflected off of him and went into the goal. The yeah, it was Ranful. Yeah, it was Ranful. He had so he had Zalazar and Bolter on the cutback. And did Oleon actually hit that or was that a deflection? So the defender tried to clear it's a deflection. it. Deflection. It yeah, it's yeah. a deflection. Wow. He cleared it right into Oleon. Uh, beautiful. Look at that. <laughs> that. That's what I was saying initially. I'm like, that's a really difficult angle. I'm surprised he got that in. He didn't even shoot that. Yeah, that was just a deflection. He put his foot out. Nice play. One nothing. That's what we need. Ease it up there. I think now we can start playing our game, and then maybe Toroda, which he's, he's been involved already, but you know maybe he can start getting to the action, get his goal that he needs. Yeah, that's it's so nice to have some of those weird ones go our way for once. We've had our it was the opposite last year. Yeah. Oh my god! Yeah, last over the past couple of years. Anytime years. there's a weird broken play like that, it just you know. All right, for those so. of you just joining us, Schalke just scored a goal. Ovian on the deflection, really a nice play between Paulson and Ronfel on the corner. Uh, he crosses in the middle. Defender for Dresden tries to clear. Hits of an Oviano and goes right in the goal. Well, we will take it all day. one nothing. We lead in the 22nd minute. By the way, Paul, thank you for joining us on the stream today. Obviously, you're bringing us good luck. I thought that was, I thought that was Frazzle for a second. <laughs> I am seeing things. You love that from Oweyan too, just because like that that goal doesn't happen if he doesn't put the effort in to try to even challenge that ball. Yeah, like I mean, he he makes the sprint, he makes the run, and, and good things happen sometimes when you you know put that extra little bit of effort in because he certainly. I, mean, I don't think we would have criticized him if he hadn't if that situation and just kind of like stepped off and kind of uh, tried to cover the guy coming out. But yeah, no, no, puts him under pressure, forcing the issue. No, I think I think the consistency of our wing backs, wingers, whatever you want to call them, constantly getting to the box and then constantly getting back to defend has been so important this season to our success. We did not see that in a, for a long time. Like when our guys would push up, they would not bring back, they would not come back, or vice versa, they would just stay back and not come up and don't help offensively. I'm interested to see this replay because I want to see how close it actually was. It looked like a half decent hit there. Ah, that's pretty far off. Yeah. Made Frazzle scramble, that's for sure. I'd rather him scramble and not be close than uh, the opposite, so. Frazzle taking his time. I love seeing Turtle um, trying to encourage the boys and trying to tell them where to go. That's what we, you know, leadership. That's leadership. That's why he's wearing a captain's armband, right? Yeah, 
Yeah, and it's nice to have the captain's armband uh, not being used as a prop for once. Yeah. As a as a carrot to get you know. Oh, you're gonna be our captain. Yeah, immediately out of out of you know out of contract to, to stay with the club. Based on current standings, we are in we're tied for first in points, but St. Pauli has not played yet. There's Malik Chow on the dribble again a couple of seconds ago there. It's come what we've been talking about on the podcast recently is his ability to, to do that from here, uh, you oh, know, from time to time. It. Yeah, I think his ability to bring up the bring the ball up, him and Kaminsky and really Itakura as well, but more so Malik Tiao. Um, it's it's so important to when we try to get out of jams and it's nice to see that central defender take that run at times, right up the up the field. My my one thing with Paulson is like I, I I feel like I would just like him to be involved in the build up a little bit more. And um, I, I mean, once again, I don't know if it's entirely a function of our shape and the way people set up against us or not. But it just seems like that's that's partially not an emphasis for us in in what we're trying to accomplish. And also just that I feel like he he never really seems overly interested in in inserting himself in the game that way. Um, but. Yeah, I, I also feel like he's just his sole job out there is just being a defender, defensively minded as opposed to anything else, and that's why I think I would love to see him do more on the offensive side as well, like you like you mentioned. Good pass out to the right, uh, Ronful. Shaka's playing well while they do the quick one-two passes, really getting the ball moving like they're doing right now with Kaminsky. Nice over ball, to yeah, him. nice ball from Kaminsky. Ooh. Good ball back in from Paulson, making kind of oh. a late trailing run. I feel like I'm being led by the blind here where uh, you get excited you get excited for something, and I'm like, I don't yeah. know what's going to happen. What's going to happen? <laughs> Ooh. All right, so uh, Paul's chiming in on his uh, illegal stream or his uh, stream of choice. Uh, he says, watching a German feed through sporteins.de on our Surfshark VPN. See, VPN is the way to go. Might be pretending that we are in Germany on a VPN. We have no yeah, we all we all live in Germany. Yeah. Yeah. We well, are based out of Germany. We're yeah. in Gelsenkirchen. <laughs> or so our phones believe. According to my phone, I'm in Frankfurt. But just saying. That's that That's Express VPN Frankfurt location, baby. That's the good one. This 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 accent you hear is authentic Frankfurt right here. Yes, straight up. Very much so. <laughs> All right, Dresden trying to play the ball out, and they turn it over in the midfield. Good pressure by us that kind of initiated that, forced him to an error. Here we go. Ah. Oh. All right, we get opportunity here. Offensive end. Our player goes down, no call, play on. <laughs> My girlfriend is German. It's legit. <laughs> All right, Shalkup tried to play their way out. It looks like it was uh, Ronfold trying to pass in the middle, but turned it over. Again, we're, we're playing too sloppy right now. I mean, if, I, I want to look at the stats because I feel like we're playing really bad on the passing standpoint. All right, let's see. So currently shots four to three in our favor on target one to one. Of course, the one that we had was the goal. Possession is 62-38 in our favor. Uh, passing accuracy, this is the one I always look at. Dresden is playing poorly with 68, but we're not any better at 78. Ideally, you want to see 85 plus, I think. And I think your team is really humming. And we're, we're creating a lot of uh, unforced errors and creating errors on our own. Uh, so it's not really great at the moment. But uh, we're winning. That's the most important thing. We should be seeing St. Pauli here anytime soon, huh? That will be an interesting game with um, our good friend Bergstaller, huh? The band, the myth, the legend. Yeah, yeah. Legend says he's still offside to this day. <laughs> it's any wonder how he has nine goals this year. They must turn off the offsides rule like in uh, like you do in FIFA. Corner kick or throw in? What we got? The Nord Curve certainly had an opinion on that decision from the referee. So it must be a throw in, huh? Yep. I can't wait five seconds. That's what she said. 
think that yeah, I think that should have been a corner. It looks like it. Yeah, they're gonna go with a yeah. goal kick here, but I look that looks like it was kicked out, yeah, by the Dresden player. <clears throat> I do love that Zawazar really has kind of taken over that that Harit role of just being like the buzzy midfield player who's gonna like you know take things on the dribble when necessary and pull himself out of like you know three or four players simultaneously pressing him and you know it's nice to have somebody that can do that on the ball occasionally and like I feel like he's grown into that a little bit over the season I felt like it was slightly more haphazard and um you know just less effective early on which is when I think you and I had been a little bit more critical of him but yeah. Um, uh, it's good to see too because we've been we've been asking about this for him for a while and now he's starting to grow the last couple of games at least he's getting stronger and stronger. Uh what you want, you want all your players to get better as the season goes on. So that's it's a it's a good thing, I think. Right. Jack is looking that's a good. nice move down the right hand side, honestly, from them. Yeah, good give and go. Keep getting updates on my phone and don't know what it is. Trying to find a way to edge it to the stream, but uh, I'll give up. Do another day. This is working out so far. So, oh, yeah. Throw, yeah, throw in from our sort of defensive left side gets into the box bounces around a little bit and ultimately allows somebody to get a touch on it and kind of turn and fire and you know luckily um significantly off target there but that was uh concerning for a moment yeah you never like to see him be in our box with the ball and be able to do almost whatever they want so we got away with one i think there <clears throat> Deep kick by Frazzle. One back by Dresden. <laughs> Someone on uh, Shaka's website is uh, or on the Shaka USA group. Uh, someone's sharing a stream, live stream sideways. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hope I don't get them in trouble for this. It's better than nothing, I guess. At the moment, not much. We're, we're, again, we're yeah, holding I mean, possession, but and that that turnover just now is pretty unforced. Um, yeah. it's just sloppy play. It's very sloppy. And see there, I think Ovian, I think it was, no, Kaminsky, he really could have gone back to Frazzle. Frazzle's good enough with his feet where he could have played it by himself, got out of trouble as opposed to hit it out. But I guess it's a safe play, right? I mean, nice to see Grimaz is actually animated on the sideline, though. Is yeah. So often he's uh, the more stoic one. Yeah, the last couple games I've noticed that he's gotten more and more into it. Maybe because he's going into the role more and uh, the players are really starting to adapt him. I don't know. Or he feels more comfortable. I don't know. Again, this is, though the game is fairly even at this moment, I think we should be creating more opportunities, which we're not. I think Dresden spent more time in our end than we've been on their end. And they have a graphic up <clears throat> right now, which isn't overly surprising, but kind of showing the Schalke attacking zone. 67% yeah. going down the left-hand side right now, right now. Not a lot going down uh, Ranful's side and, and very little um, centrally either. Uh, would be curious to hear your thoughts on what you've seen uh, Servano Mikhailov so far, because I feel like he's been pretty I didn't even know he was on the pitch. Uh, other than reading his name on the uh, starting lineup, I haven't noticed him at all. Um, and it's not surprising, like you said, that the right-hand side's been pretty quiet. Ronfo is probably being extra defensive 
other than the, other than the goal. Um, and Ovian loves to get down that side. I think if Iden has had, was in there, I think it'd be a little bit more even. Ovian's always going to have that advantage over the right side, but um, yeah, Mikhailov is non-existent so far. What, what do you what do you make of of Ranful seemingly being the second choice at the moment uh, over a guy like yeah. Cherlinov? Over Cherlinov is interesting, and I, one I don't get the Becker thing, but. Cherlinov, we've seen already this season he's been doing good things offensively. Maybe in a game like this, Gramotis realizes that they want a little bit more defensive help than offensive side. Um, and so that's why he got Ronfell, because maybe Ronf I, I think Ronfell's going to be better than Cherlinov, I think, no doubt about that. I mean, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I know he's got two guys on him right now, but that 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 sequence from Ranfell just now, too, is not particularly inspiring. Like, needs needs to pull that back or find a different option yeah. he, instead of just getting Marshall all the way out. And maybe I, I know Cherlinov is just getting over an injury because last game he had like a cast on one of his hands. Um, I don't know if that has something to do with it or not. But, you know, the last time we saw Cherlinov start, he was really poor defensively, causing a lot of turnovers. It may have been the last game we – I don't remember when it was, but um, we haven't seen him for a while. And I wonder if it's either Gramosi is thinking he needs to do better defensively before he gets back into lineup or, or he just completely wrote him off after I then took it over. Nice job for me to cur there. Yeah. Kingsley's joining us on the stream. Welcome to the stream, Kingsley. Yeah, still, still a few too many, I think, like aimless clearances for my taste at the moment, too. Um, be nice if we could just have that little extra second of composure and try to find a, a shorter outlet ball on some of these after we're defending. Because, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll take the ball away from them after yeah. one of their sequences, but then it's like immediately it seems like we're hoofing it upfield and, and giving it back a little bit too often. And I think that's a big down point of having not having Iden in there and you having Ronful is Iden and, and Tiao together have been very, you know, they've been magic on that side. They both composed with together. They can find each other. They can you know, take their time. Ronful seems to be rushing things a little bit because I guess he's been out of it, but that's been the one major thing that I've noticed in this game, at least. I mean, obviously, Iden was bringing all his qualities, his uh, Ralph Macchio impersonations, but um, composure is something that he has that Ronfell hasn't had so far. The one time we get in the box, uh, we get a goal off a of deflection. I'll take it. Yeah, as I said, I, I think we have uh, quite a bank built up of uh, goals that we can score like that before I'm going to start feeling guilty about any of them based on thing, how things have gone the last couple of years. I, I'm, normally, I'd be like, oh, man, I feel really bad for Dresden for that because it's kind of a you know janky goal. But uh, yeah, I, I don't really care at the moment. I'll, I'll, I'll Much take, overdue. Much overdue. Yeah, I'll take a bunch of those. We're still in the red. We still need to get more, make it somewhat even over the last couple of years. Yes, sir. Even that season where we finished uh, second, we had a lot of penalties in our favor, but we had so many in the last years after that, it's still not enough. <laughs> it does seem like Toronto's starting to get a bit frustrated out there with the uh, with the service over the first 35 minutes or so. Yeah. He started out, you know, he's dropped, he been dropping down a little bit to get the ball, playing a playmaker mostly. Uh, but yeah, we've seen this a lot over the last several weeks. Where he's getting frustrated, but he, you know, luckily for him, he just stays in the game, and then eventually he'll find his mark. Hopefully, I mean, had did the last game, but you know, if we can keep him engaged for the most part, keep him, uh, keep him concentrated. I think if we eventually get an opportunity, he'll be there to to put it away for us. Charlie's in the house. What's up, Charlie? Luke Alf. Dresden's doing a nice job of kind of matching, I think, us physically right now, and I think we need to do more to kind of stretch them out, um, and and kind of move them with the ball, uh instead of getting bogged down in some of these physical battles yeah because we're not really coming off better for those at the moment they're doing a good job what are your thoughts on so we, we talk about mikhailov mikhailov's been pretty much non-existent this first half what are your thoughts on bolter other than that first couple of plays in the you know first 10 minutes i haven't seen much of him have you um, I mean, I haven't seen much of Toronto though either i mean like the two of them just haven't been involved in the game yeah. either of them much in general i don't think it's a, much to do with them so far. Uh, yeah, we're having difficulty as, as we've kind of been saying all half building. Um, a lot of long balls that we're playing in and kind of hoping that we can get a rebound off of one of them, and uh, it's not working out for us so far. Um, 
yeah, I mean, Ranfo hasn't been a consistent option to build through either. We've done a decent amount through Obi-Wan, but once again, we need we need a little bit more, I think, centrally. is what, That's just kind of been one of my themes of the season. I, and I know it's difficult to to do that because most teams that you're going to come up against are kind of set up to try to force you high and wide, right, not give up the, the center part of the pitch, but um, ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, out of bounds. No, no, I agree with you 100%. <sighs> Halftime couldn't get here quicker because we need to regroup. Really, um, not creating much offensively. We're keeping possession, but again, possession means nothing if you're doing nothing with it. Find ways to get Boulter and Troda involved. Salazar's been better in this game than lately, but uh, other than that, it's been no one else. There, see Drexler. Yeah, right Drexler in time. Injured, yeah. Right? Um, I should know that, but I that, but I don't. If, he, if he, I mean, because I don't even know how how bad the Ida injury is yet. Have we have we seen that? Because we didn't. We, we no. Yeah. no. This week was kind of a blur, really. And um, I know that there was a comment where Drexler was talking to Frazzle, and he's like, "Look, man, I would I would kill to be playing the game right now." You know, it's, I forgot what the exact word wording was, but um, sounds like it's an injury. Hopefully, it's not too serious for he's out for long term. We'll see. Maybe we'll get an opportunity at halftime to uh, look those up, huh? From the Shalka website, uh, yeah, that's not good. Uh, out for the foreseeable future. For I then. Yep. Oh. I don't know what that means. That's not specific, but out for the foreseeable future. Hmm. Great play between Toroda and Bolter. Bolter trying to find Toroda back door just too far in front of him. He missed it. But better. That's better than we had been doing. Last five minutes of the first half. Let's see if we can create some opportunity here. Get a shot on goal. Make the keeper work for it. We haven't done that at all. I said it's been pretty clear that um, Fraz has been doing been the more busy of the two keepers. I think would you not agree? Yeah, um, yeah, I think I'd probably agree with that for the most part. All right, Justin out on the left hand side. Good pressure by Shaka, but uh, Justin passes it back to kind of relieve that pressure. Shaka starting to drop back, not really pressing, uh, letting Dresden bring it out to midfield where that's typically where Shaka turns it up around midfield here. I think I saw a, a rare glimpse of uh, Mikhailov there on that camera shot. <laughs> there we go. Right now it's been uh, Ojan Kaminsky and um, Mikhailov just passing back and forth with each other. Throw in for Shaka here. I mean, yeah. Mik Mikhailov just doesn't seem like he wants his touches. Yeah, he doesn't seem like he's he's interested in getting involved that much. Like he will when necessary, but he's not looking for the ball. He's not trying to force the issue at all. I don't think he's been active enough. No, I agree about that 100. percent I don't know if it's the crowds intimidating him or or what's going on here, but he's not been active enough. I think I agree. All right. Again, just turning it over unnecessarily. All right. Throwing for Dresden here at midfield in the 42nd minute. I can't imagine more than two minutes added on to end of this half. Dresden just packing it, passing it back and forth right now in, in their own end. I hear they come. Like, Man. see, like, good effort to stick with it, but like, Mikhailov there needs just needs to find an option quicker. He's watching too much of these uh, hype videos where they, you know, Ronaldinho doing all these tricks and trying to get through five guys. He's not Harit. Shot on goal by number five, but uh, right to Frazzle. Adrian Rabio looking guy. <laughs> I, I nearly said that. And I was like, wait a minute. It's wrong, wrong league. Charlie says he's really missing Hopi and, and Weston. Yeah, that American influence is not there at the moment for uh, for Schalke, at least on the first team. Definitely on, in the junior ranks, but uh, not on the first team. I wonder how Hopi's season is going. Weston seems to be struggling so far at Juventus, but uh, Hopi at Mallorca. I'm curious to see how he's been doing. I, I don't think first. he's gotten um, – I haven't been paying attention too closely. I don't think he's gotten consistent, like, starting minutes or anything. So No, he had, like, I think one start early on, and then I hadn't seen much of it, mostly um, cameos. That, that, that does look like a foul. 
Yeah. Where's VAR? Where's VAR? It's out of the box anyway, isn't it? Yeah. Still. Good. Yellow card. Gil Bacata. Yankees hat in the Nord curve. It's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, you, you do miss to some extent the uh, the chaos merchant that was Weston McKinney. Yeah. Just yeah, just out of control constantly, but that can benefit you going forward. It can hurt you going back, but uh always keeps things interesting. All right, set piece opportunity for us. Looks like it's Salazar and Oyan. Oyan's probably gonna take it here. We need to see if we can get something here. Good ball. Ooh. Ooh. Strong save. Strong save by the keeper there. Had good pace, good accuracy. Uh, keeper there, strong hands. It was headed for upper 90. Nice dip on it, too. I don't mind him having a go every once in a while. No, um, no, no, no. Yeah, generally, he, he tends to you know loft that in and, and play it up for one of his center backs, which I think is probably the right decision, but um, I think he's earned uh, a couple goes every once in a while on those. Yeah. Hell, he just scored. Why not go for it, right? Do miss the Naldo days. <laughs> yeah. Well, from that kind of distance, you just have somebody tee it up for him and see what he can do. Yeah. I mean, that's how he got that uh, that nice goal against Dortmund years ago. Yeah, was it the two one or the two? Yep. Was it two nil that game or two one? Two nil. Two nil. Yeah, two that was like that was the second one though, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. I mean. That was the second game of the the, the game earlier in the season where it was uh four four the epic game. So now the two great games that that year against Dortmund. All right, we got a little bit of fracas going on here between uh. Dresden and Schalke. We got a Dresden player on the ground. Didn't see who yeah. shoved him to the ground. No, so it, it looked like it may have been a foul on Mikhailov initially, who got a yellow card, but then a Dresden player was given a yellow card as well for coming over and, and making a scene. Yeah, there's the yellow for Mikhailov. That's the most action Mikhailov's had this half. I think he needs to be the first one to come off. I think. Yeah, I mean, I, I hate, I hate. I hate being harsh on somebody. I just, yeah, I just I just don't think he's offering us almost anything in this half so far. Um, I want to see that. Was this studs up there a little bit? I want to see that one from the replay of that foul again. <laughs> okay, so it wasn't really a shove. Paulson tried to get uh, the player out of the way, and that player uh, tripped over the, the fallen player. I didn't even see how the player fell. Was it from the tackle? Three, number three? Yeah. Yeah, that's from Mikhailov's tackle. You love seeing Bolter in the mix, right? In the yeah, tree. dude. Bo yeah, Bolter just <laughs> Bolter's just looking like he doesn't have time for any of it. Like the yeah, the entire match is an inconvenience. I got a date. To him. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> I love that guy so much. I feel so bad for saying that, but like like every every time I see his face, I just almost laugh. Like it's just he's yeah. he's even when he's happy, it looks like that. <laughs> I still need to get me a, a new Schalke kit with the uh, the red. I love that red. I want to get it in Toronto. But when uh, Bolter's happy, it, it's like a, it's a happiness that comes from like a sense of conquest, like, like that he's like, it, yeah. It's it's not just because he's like generally in a good mood. It's because he's like just vanquished an enemy or something. He's he's hilarious. Yeah. Seriously, a, a Bond yeah, villain. There we go. All right, we're at halftime. We got the lead here. Um, switching screens here. Boom. Okay, let me make this a little bit even here for both of us. Hey, here we go. That's somewhat even, right? <laughs> Paulson and Zawitz are having an uh, interesting conversation there. It looks like maybe uh, Paulson trying to give him some direction, kind of coming down on him a little bit. That's interesting. But you know, you know that Zawitzar apparently is, is there for it and is listening it and taking it seriously. That that's that's good team. Uh, look at this. They're still talking, going off the pitch, deep in conversation. These two. Yeah. So we're at halftime here. one nothing lead goal by Ovayan off the deflection. I'll take it all day. Frazzle now talking to Mikhailov. He's like, you need to get your shit together, bud. I'm yeah, I, just, I, I, I would I would be I would be surprised if, if Kromatsis keeps a young guy with a yellow card on to start the second half. Yeah. Um we'll see how that goes, but um especially given that late yellow card, I think he probably has to come off. Yeah, the performance plus that yellow, I think it's uh, absolutely warranted that he comes off. Um, not enough for me. All right, so looking at the at the halftime statistics here, Shaka actually were dominating the possession for a while, but now it's more 49-51, 50-50 basically. Um, most team, most both teams are playing really in the middle of the pitch, really no attacking opportunities. Uh, shots on goal seven to six on target three to three. 
Uh, corner kicks two to one in favor of Dresden. Free kicks even at five. Uh, let's see. Um, throw ins 16 for Dresden, 10 for Schalke. Uh, we just had the yellow cards here at the end of the game. And so, yeah, not much going on here. A lot of even in fouls, even in saves. It's been fairly even game, much more even than it should be. I think it's a game we should easily be up in, in every statistic, and we're not. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and I was kind of hoping, um, you know, after that sort of initial 15-minute period where it was slightly more end-to-end, -end, a little bit more frenetic energy, that once it kind of settled into more of a rhythm, that that would actually be to our benefit uh, and allow us to build a little bit uh, more smoothly. But, yeah, we really, as you said, struggled um, to connect passes, and, and, you know, some of those numbers aren't exactly what you'd want them to be. Uh, it almost felt, yeah, it almost felt like that game calming down was almost to Dresden's benefit more than us. Uh, interesting to see what, what changes Komatsos makes at halftime. Um, either from a personnel standpoint or from kind of an emphasis on how we build. Yeah, uh, this is this is a typical game where you would he would take off Bulter and bring on someone like Trulinov or something. But I I like to see Bulter stay in there with Tarota. I think Mikhailov is the obvious choice to come off first. Um, Paulson's doing enough for me defensively where he should stay, and uh, Salazar's been in the mix the whole game. Uh, you know, if the next person I'd probably bring off is probably Ranful. For whom I don't know. Maybe Trulinov comes on the right hand side. Who would you bring in the left hand side? Is a question. Uh, if you were to take off Mikhailov, would it bring in Sherlin off or would it be someone else? Sorry, I'm trying to take a look at who we have on the bench. Um, I mean, so Danny Lotza is amongst the substitutes, which is interesting because I didn't notice that pre kickoff. So is, is he, you know, if, potentially in line for like a 20, 30 minute cameo here? What if you um, brought him in for, for Mikhailov, move Salazar out to the left? bringing lots in the middle with Paulson. You think that could work? You know, yeah, I think that's an option. Um, I think you could, you could move, uh, you could, I mean, you probably don't want to move Paulson to one of those other midfield positions, but you could do that and bring Flick in as the six. Um, I mean, a, Dr a Drizzy's on the bench. We haven't seen a whole lot of him. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if you see like a, a straight swap for a Drizzy coming in. Um, there's, there's several, yeah, there's, there's a number of different midfield options uh, for us right now. You could always bring in the bald eagle, Henny Matri Matriciani. <laughs> I mean, Timo Becker on the right could work if you don't bring in Cherlenov. Uh, I like the shot about Flick. Um, Perringer. Perringer is an option, obviously. Uh, that's who we've usually seen Perringer on and Bolter off, but uh, maybe bringing Perringer on for on the left hand side could be an, an option if he could play the wing. Well, we know Bolter could play the wing, right? So put Perringer and, and Toroto up top, put Bolter in the left. And you got three people coming into the box, and maybe uh, Bolter on the wing could create more opportunities than we currently have. All options that we have at the moment. This uh, this Google graphic that I'm looking at, which I think is what you throw up on the uh, the podcast sometimes, yeah. the match lineup, once again uh, is suggesting that Oyan is playing uh, right central midfield. Uh, and that it's, <laughs> it's Mikhailov is playing uh, sort of that left wing back position. Um don't understand right. why that's so difficult for them. It's interesting. Oh, by the way, if you want to jump off that uh, the other stream, I think it might be affecting your, your camera quality here. No worries. All right, that's a sloppy first half. Um, I'm going to step away for a minute. I'll be right back. I was just going to say, I'm going to do the same thing. So catch you guys soon.
All right. Well, while we wait for Jack to get back, uh, I'm looking ahead at the schedule right now of the rest of the rest of the Svita Liga action this weekend. Uh, Sanhausen hosting Werder Bremen, St. Pauli hosting Hansa Rostock, and Jan Regensburg hosting Hanover. Uh, should be interesting to see how those, at least the St. Pauli matchup and the Regensburg matchup end up. Uh, based on the current standings, St. Pauli is in first. They play one less game, but we are, you know, technically tied with them in points. Nuremberg, our uh, friends, are are one point behind us after 11 match days. Regensburg is three points behind us. So, you know, if they lose or or draw, we'll be ahead of them. Um, and Verder, Verder's way down there. So, yeah, it's uh, be interesting to see how the rest of this. Uh, the schedule comes out here, how the rest of the weekend turns out. St. Pauli's been f- hot. They've been fired this year. Uh, whatever they're doing is working really well. And uh, our old friend Guido Berkstaller is uh, getting the goals in there. He's got, I think, nine this year so far. He's the only one who's uh, he's second in the league to, obviously, Tarota. So uh, whatever he's doing, whatever he's drinking St. Pauli, maybe it's some St. Pauli out there. Uh, it's working for him. So maybe they don't use the offside rules in, in over there. I don't, I'm not sure, but he's getting it done this year. Uh. All right. All right. So looking at the goals this year, goal scoring list. Obviously, Toronto's in first with 11. Brooks Tyler with nine. Uh, Luca Pfeiffer from Darmstadt has eight. We play Darmstadt soon. Um, also from Darmstadt, Philip Tietz has eight. So they got two goal scorers there. You're going to have to worry about when we play them. And then Sven Mikael uh, from Paderborn also has eight. Assists, we have Thomas Ovian, who is tied for third in the league, with four assists so far this year uh, to go with his goal that he scored today, which is great. Uh, looking at the yellow card list, we have nobody on that list, which is good. Red cards, we don't have anyone. Oh, we got one player, Victor Paulson, tied for first with the most in the league. So it's all good. All good. Get back to the Shaka stats here. All right. So we're here at halftime. one nothing Shaka. Goal by Thomas Ovian, a deflection off of a clearance from Dynamo Dresden. Shots are 6-7 to seven in favor of Dresden. Shots on target slightly in favor of Dresden. They've done more with the ball than we have, admittedly. Possession's pretty much even 50-50, depending on which website you look at. Pass accuracy has been poor for both teams. You're looking at the low 70s for both. So it's uh, not been great for either of these teams here. So we are still in commercial here. I know that for those of you who are in the Schalke USA North America group on Facebook, uh, there's a live stream going on there. So kudos to whoever posted that, that link. But we're still at halftime here. Still the commercial break. It's coming back here very, very soon. Uh, excited to see what happens in the second half. Obviously, Mikhailov has not been the, playing that great. Uh, so we hopefully see something with him. But, uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens coming here in the second half. We needed that group, regroup check uh, going into halftime because we were looking a little, a little shaky there at the end. Yeah, uh, we definitely were. Um, definitely felt like Dresden sort of grew into the game a little bit towards the second half. And uh, I think that that halftime whistle may have been more kind to us uh, than them at that point. So, yeah, definitely see how they come out here. Uh, interested to see if there's going to be any changes as we talked about, particularly maybe Mikhailov coming off. Um, doesn't appear as though that's the case, what I can see, but we'll, we'll take a look here. Yeah, uh, I think I just saw Mikhailov there, so I think he's still in the lineup. Ronfield's coming out as well, so or coming into the field, as you say. So, uh, let's see here. Charlie says, on the subject of Hoppy, he is at fifth in line. Yeah, not even on the roster last match. Hope he gets traded or loaned out over the winter break. Yeah, that's uh, that's unfortunate for him. Uh, he, I think, he, had he stayed at Schalke, you know, we don't know what the circumstances are with the move, but. At least he would have been third in the pecking order, right? Behind Taroto and Bolter. And what, what better players to learn your trade from than those two, especially Taroto, right? But, uh, yeah, uh, unfortunately he went to Mallorca, and unfortunately it's not working for him at right now, but uh, we'll see 
Uh, maybe he needs the uh, winter break to kind of get things going, but we're still a couple months from that. No, and it's even a little bit more frustrating because, once again, there isn't um, a, a natural sort of person that's like third on the depth chart for us that you say, like, that's definitely the guy who should come in in place of Bolter or Tirada in yeah. the case that we need to rotate or one of them goes down with injury. And, and I think Hoppy almost certainly would have been that guy. And you especially look at kind of the fixture list for this upcoming week, playing Saturday in that Tuesday match against 1860 Munich in the DFU Pokal, followed by a Friday match, correct? Yeah. Um, in, yeah. so I mean, that's a very tight, congested window, and like that's when it'd be nice to maybe have a Matthew Hoppy throw him in for that DFP Pokal match. Um, or if you you know want to emphasize that, then put him in for that Friday match following and get some rotation in there. But, um, yeah, I mean, especially if he's not getting the minutes at Mallorca, I mean, I can't blame him for wanting to go there and ply his trade in, in that kind of like beautiful location, but uh, you, you have to think that he would have been getting more work here, although I, I mean, I'm sure maybe those discussions were had and that factored into a decision to move, but. I don't know. So it doesn't seem like less likely that he'd get playing time with us, the second division than, than what he's doing right now. Yeah. And uh, for those uh, listening in, we second half just got kicked off. Uh, but yeah, no, we, we were very thin on the attacking front, right? Perringer is third in line, but it's because we have nobody else, right? Not that he's been playing bad, but really we have no other options. I mean, after Perringer, it's probably Cherlinov, I would imagine, or Mikhailov. So it's, we're very thin at the moment. And you thought keeping, you know, Hoppy on the team, uh, he would have been fighting for third position. He would definitely get in pitch time, at least if not the DFP Cal, right? So it is what it is, I guess, and we'll see. We'll keep monitoring him, but um, maybe the next American in the line to come up is uh, Evan. It's a lovely weighted ball from Toronto. Play that across. Come on. Uh, both just didn't get his shoulder turned quick enough. He didn't see what was going on. That's a nice ball back in, though. Oh, wow. Some good stuff there and some bad stuff there for a second, but... um. Oh, sorry. I'm, I'm pretty far ahead of you at this point. It feels like so. What? Uh, yeah, I, I, but I. Uh... Bolter with a nice pass, yeah, yeah. to Toroda. But Toroda yeah. picked up this those. position on like sort of like the right wing around midfield to, to to pick that off, and he played this really nice ball, uh, in for Bolter, who uh, who had a man uh, running kind of on the far side of the box and just didn't get his shoulder turned to take a look at what was available to him quick enough. I feel like. Well. Ball wide to Oweon right now, getting fired in. Let's, Let's crack a beer here. Hopefully, running. get a goal here. Double sub for Dresden at halftime. By the way, um, uh, the yellow card uh, makes sense. Yeah, the uh, the midfielder who picked up the yellow card is off. For uh, yeah, and then uh, Marshall, their striker, who actually thought had a decent half at times, looked like he was yeah. involved in a lot. He was he was taken off for Pascal Som. I wonder if there was an injury concern there with him with taking him off. Um, we mentioned that Mikhailov also got a yellow, so we, we would imagine between that and the, his play that he'd be coming off one of the first ones to come off for Schalke. We'll see. There's a Kaminsky yellow. Yep. That's not ideal. No. But he doesn't seem like the player that would be worrisome with a yellow. Uh, there are some players like Paulson, absolutely. Um, Tiao, probably. Bolter probably, but uh, yeah, Kaminsky, uh, not so much, I don't think. I mean, that was that for kicking the ball away? Yeah, probably. That feels like pretty, pretty suspect, but. Cheers, Chris. Welcome What's up, Chris? Party. Am I the only one drinking here? I'm curious for those in the chat and Jack. Anybody else drinking here? Or is it just me? I'm already on my second or third beer here, so I should I should have I should have grabbed something during halftime. I didn't. The game is early enough for me where I'm happy to drink as opposed to nighttime. But yeah, it's all right. It's all right. I'm trying to see if I happen to have something handy. By the way, for those who are wondering, maybe where was the live stream last game? It's hard for Jack and I to do live streams on a Friday. Fridays, we're, we both are fully employed, so it's hard for us to do work and, and do a live stream. Uh, we both have to go into the office, or at least I do. So uh, it's difficult to do Friday streams, and this year we seem to have a boatload of them. We've already had three or f four or five already, and we're probably going to have uh, one more on the horizon here. Um, one of those, I think, is that uh, we play Darmstadt, and I was talking about this during halftime, that they have two eight-goal scorers. They got some goal scorers there to worry about. I mean, we obviously have Turtle and Bolter, but combined, they got two better goal scorers. They got two eight goal scorers there in, in Darmstadt between Tietz and uh, I forget who the other player is. But, um, yeah, it's a team that's learned to be more offensive post Gramozis. 
Okay, here we go. Let's try not to ruin this for you. Um, so this is once again an attack that started from initially from Torada taking up a position on that right midfield side. Um, Mikhailov with a decently timed run ultimately gets played through, and you think he should have probably done better there. Uh, that's- yeah, yeah, I think he should have. Chris says he's drinking Urban Chestnut Count Orlock. It's uh, pumpkin ale. All right, right on. Is that local to St. Louis? Chris will have to chime in and let us know. I am drinking something that's local to Wisconsin. Uh, that's uh, Spotted Cow, but I'm not in Wisconsin. I got that when I was up in my trip, my my vacation up towards Jack. So, I, I had some Diplomatico rum within arm's reach. So that's what oh. we're uh, we're doing at the moment. That, that's that's nice. yeah, not exactly what I was probably in the mood for, but that's what I had <laughs> handy. So, get the little Caribbean vibe going. I like it. Hey, I like it. It's a hoppy vibe with Mallorca, right? Don't mean for like Diplomatico rum to be catching strays here on a live stream about soccer, but uh, pretty highly rated at the moment. And I got to tell you, I was a little bit disappointed when I purchased that bottle. Um, kind of syrupy, man. A little, little uh, over the top, I feel like, but you know. Chris says, yes, do? it's local to St. Louis. Yeah, no, it's, you, I can't, I believe you can't always believe the hype with uh, many things, but also alcohol, right? Sometimes it's right. Sometimes it's wrong. Um there's a lot of hype about the Scotty Pippen uh, liquor over in, in uh, Chicago, but Jack saved me from that uh, that fiasco. <laughs> yeah, this is the diplomatic rum is like actually cough syrup, so um, would recommend that you avoid if you're looking for a bottle of that. But yeah, Chris Urban, I feel like I've I, I knew that because I feel like I've had that at Amsterdam Tavern maybe once or twice when I visited uh, St. Louis. Not that specific one, but something from Urban Chest, and that sounds familiar. All right, looks like a second consecutive corner kick. Oh, nope, this will be a throw in this time for Dresden. They did nothing on the line. Oh, nope, I stand corrected. Second consecutive corner kick here for Dresden. And again, they're playing it short. Oh, here they go in the box. Cleared away. Is that Salazar on the clear? Or is that Paulson? I really need to start watching these games on like a, t- a tablet or something. I say this every game and I never do it. Uh, trying to watch the game on a you know a little little phone screen is not the easiest thing in the world. All right, another short kick, cross into the box, easily snagged up by uh, Frazzle. I'm digging uh, the goalkeeper's pink jerseys. You like that? I don't dislike it. Okay. It's not. I don't think it's like the highest rated goalkeeper kit that I've seen, but I, yeah, it's no. fine. I, I never mind when they do something like wildly different from the actual team team kit. I think that's always interesting when you have that contrast. I love this green one that they have, but there was a I think there was a shade of green that maybe Fairman rocked a couple years ago, maybe last year that I liked a lot too. It's escaping me at the moment. I was surprised they went like pure pink as opposed to sort of that. Uh, what, what, what's the proper term for that color? Is more of like a fuchsia, maybe? Fuchsia, that kinda, yeah. Kind of rocked in the past. I don't, I don't yeah. know proper art terms um slightly more purple i don't know proper art terms proper I don't art terms know. i don't even know dude we don't know art we don't know tactics we don't know anything it's true this is true we got a drink that's about it that's all that matters i still think my favorite jersey all time of shalka one of them is the one we had i think 2011 2012 we had a little bit of purple in it uh you know what i'm talking about it was during raul and junto our days I have to go back and look at that one. I, can't I think it was a season ahead. we went deep into the Champions League and we won the DFB Pokal. I think it was that year. I have to go back and look at the pictures. But I, I remember that year I wanted a Farfan jersey so bad. And it's an unfortunate site. Like we got Fnatic right now. Fnatic is where you can get all your Shaka gear here in the in the in the this side of the pond, U.S. and Canada. And the options, I'll be honest, are lacking. Jack, you you cannot get the red jersey there. You, you can get all the old school, like old school last year's jerseys or the year before, but the choices are really limiting. I find. I don't know if you're trying to go on to uh, Fanatic and try to get any anything from there, but uh, I've been disappointed. Sorry, Shaco. Uh, unfortunately, I tend to not buy a bunch of soccer jerseys because they 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 uh, they kind of a lot of them run little, run a little bit small, you know, because they're sort of you know yeah designed around actual athletes, uh, which I am not, which I am not. I am not. So uh, yeah, they tend to not be the most uh, flattering attire for your boy 
but um yeah i mean i i should i should try to make an effort to like purchase one of our jerseys every season like whichever of the three that we roll out that's my favorite and just kind of get a catalog running of that but um and i got i gotta hang up the uh the mckinney jersey the autographed mckinney jersey in the background somewhere yeah no i i do too i actually just got frames that you can start hanging jerseys and um you can't see it in my screen because it's really small but i got um i think that's hoppy I got a, I got a, I got a frame jersey back there. I think it is Hoppy back there, but yeah. I need to hang hang up more, I know for sure. Yeah, Chris waiting for that red kit to drop in Fanatics as well. It'll be next year. As long as Turtles on the team next year, then we can possibly get that jersey then. Shaq playing on the left-hand side on the offensive end. Turning it over right to Dresden. It's been it's been a sloppy game. Yeah, I could. I mean, we're approaching the 60th minute. I'd like to see some subs sooner yeah. rather than later. Yeah, Mikhailov has to come off. Probably Ronful. I like to see Trilinov get in the matchup and Peringer my, myself. Um, I like your shout about bringing maybe Latza in and maybe this this feels like yeah to me this actually feels like an Adrizzi game. I don't know why. Yeah. Throw the, Give the boy a shot. Him. He's been he was okay last year. Like bring him in. Charlie agrees. He hopes that uh Fanatics gets the red jersey as well. Yeah, I would I would vote Sherlin off in, in a drizzy at the moment, personally. That's so for a those nice defensive clearance by Yakura. For those listening in on the call right now, if we were to interview a player. English speaking, who would you want to hear? Current shock of team member. Let us know in the chat. I'm curious what, what who you guys have thought. Obviously, there's no more Wes McKinney. There's no Hoppy anymore. Um, Nick Tatigui, who we've interviewed before, is no longer with the team. Retired. It's retired, yeah. So Evan Rotundo would be a good one. He's young. Interview's dead. There are some young Americans in the in the youth academy for sure. Uh, I think probably the next make jump up, the next one with the big hype is going to be Evan Rotondo, I think. But, uh, you know, you imagine someone on the, um, in the Kanapa Shmita is going to get a call up here soon. There's a few of them out there. It would be nice if we could somehow get a hold of uh, Ricardo Pepe, but uh, <laughs> it would be, nice. be significantly out of uh, our territory, which is probably yeah. a good thing for him, honestly. <laughs> All right, good pressure for Schalke causing a turnover, but they turn it over back themselves. And it's a foul. All right, I'd like to see a substitution here. We're in this, still getting close to the 60th minute. Yeah. Um, it's not enough offensively for me. Oh, there you go, Mikhailov. And I mean, this is what, yeah, there's been, dude, Tirada is furious right now. He should be. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think he has a right to be. This is, this is pretty, pretty poor at the moment. <laughs> I, mean, I love that from Toronto. Calm the fuck down. <laughs> Just shaking his head. Look at him. Yeah, and this, you know, this, this Robbio knockoff. It's Diet Robbio next to him from Dresden. Apparently, there's a Rudy banner in the crowd. I didn't see it. I missed it. Oh, a trainer. It would be nice to get the. Uh... That's exceptionally petty. If there's a Rudy banner in the in the audience from Schalke supporters, it's not you, Jack. Apparently, because you're live on here, so it can't be you. Probably would be DeSanto if it was. <laughs> now I'll make amends with DeSanto one day. You're gonna run into him in Chicago one day. Watch when he's visiting. All right, turnover for Schalke, and they turn it back over. It's like neither team can string three passes together when they get into the midfield. It's, it's, like it's, it's Torado who's like dropping back and actually picking that one off. There's a nice ball to Bolter. He's on. It's because he wants the ball and no one's giving him the ball. Oh, come on, guys. So Bolter's trying to do it all himself. Yeah, yeah. I think I think he should have laid that off for somebody like on multiple occasions personally, but. I know he does it around the outside of the box. He's had some goals come from it this season, but yeah, uh, get, we've we've been having difficulties getting some clear cut chances here, and I think he needs to try to just work it a little bit more with his teammates involved. 
I mean, both strikers are getting frustrated. Nothing is coming to them. They have to drop deep, get the ball, and then try to do everything themselves. Trishiani warming up as well. There it is, the bald eagle. Would he be open to trying to get hoops back or any U.S. player, especially if we've rolled up and cleared debt? Yeah. I mean, the, the main key, main goal for Schalke is to get back up immediately because uh, otherwise it's going to hurt us in the money department. So if we can get back up, maybe get some money, get some more – uh, sponsors it to open up their wallets. Um, yeah, that'd be the best way to get more players. Um, hopefully, I don't know what the contract situation is with the, with the current group of players. I'd love to see all of them go into the Svaita Liga, especially Tarota and Bolter. Um, but we'll see. I know Salazar's on loan for sure. I'm not sure about Bolter or myself. Um, but yeah. No matter what, I mean, if if we're fortunate enough to be uh, promoted this year, we need to make some kind of moves in the offseason. Teams rarely get promoted, stick to the same team, and have the same success. You need to add Bundesliga caliber players uh, to do well in the, in, the, in, the, in the top league. Apropos of nothing, I got to tell you, I do kind of rate those uh, Schalke quarter zip like warm up tops. Those are pretty sharp. No, I do like them too. I like their uh, the big winter, almost like Arsene Wenger type jacket that they have. The big puffy jacket. Tedesco used to rock it, and a couple other guys used to rock it. Look at me finding ways to drop Tedesco's name in, in a podcast or a live stream. <laughs> What's he up to these days? No one with him at the moment. He left Spartak. So he's available. There have been rumors that he may go to Italy, to Germany. There's some random shout that he might go to a bigger club. Um, bigger and saying more known in the world, but not, not in one of the top leagues. I mean, David Wagner's getting success over with young boys right now. Man United Slayers. Yeah, yeah. All right, looks like uh, Mikhailov got a little injury. Hey, time to come off. Come on. Corner kick here for Dresden. I elbowed in the back of the head, it looked like. There goes those flags in the Nord core of waving. Love to see that. That's a hell of a save. My goodness. Wow. So off the corner kick, the ball was played out, and Frazzle. A fantastic save to palm it away over the bar. Uh, really well done by Dresden off the corner. Short corner kick. The pass swung in. A header to the top corner that Fraz reacted really well to. Again, they've created more opportunities on the offensive end than we have. And this is worse. So we need to make some substitutions here. Yeah, we're, I mean, we're approaching the 65th now. Um, yeah. I don't know what. Is Wagner back in here? What's going on? I mean, I don't know what Grimaldi, yeah, seriously. I don't know what Grimaldis is waiting for here. I'd like to see something change. All right, corner cleared away. Now it looks like it's about to, maybe. Maybe not. No, no, it's going to be more Dresden subs. Jeez. Dresden going to use all five of their subs before we use one. Charlie says, think we need a big acquisition or three over winter break, or we might not move up. But we, uh, what we have is scraping by. I see. I'm, I'm, I appreciate that input, and he may be correct. I, I'm going to push back against it a little bit. I actually am pretty pleased with the personnel, with the squad. I think we have a, a good starting 11 and a little bit of depth on top of that. I wouldn't be opposed to adding more, particularly in like the striker department, but I don't feel that the actual squad of players is, is severely lacking in terms of an ability for us to um, you know, have the talent we need to get into the promotion places. I think uh, it's, yeah. once again, more it, for me, it's more of a system issue at the moment and, and a coach issue. Yeah, um, I think right now what we're seeing is the team's not playing well. And we're three points off the top of the table, technically tied at the top of the table right now. So we're not playing well at the moment, and we're, th we're at the top of the table. If we can get to that level where we play well with this personnel, we should be blowing teams away in the second half. Will we get there? That's the big question. And I think that's, the, you know, is the manager good enough to take us to that next level? Um, I think the personnel is good. I think we need depth. Absolutely need depth because, uh, you know, if one yeah. of these guys gets injured, what happens then? 
I would agree. So I guess what I would ask Charlie is I'd just be curious to hear when he says like big acquisition, that could just be me misinterpreting that. But that seems to me to suggest that he thinks that there's like, you know, one to three massive gaping holes in the current squad in terms of like positions that are absolutely replaceable in terms of the guys that are occupying them. Right. So I'd be curious, like who he thinks those guys are and where you think our big trouble areas are, because I think it all, there's a lot of positions where, where I feel relatively confident in what we're putting out there at the moment. And big acquisition could just Donnie hey, look, Lotza, off. The there we yeah, go. Here, here comes the Donnie Lotza return. Salads are to left, huh? Huh? We'll see. But Salads yeah, so Lotza back in the game. Back like in I the said team. earlier, thirty minute Donnie Lotza cameo might be more like uh, you know twenty twenty five here. But um, yeah, interesting. And he gets the captain's armband. I agree with Charlie. One injury, one injury is going to be devastating, especially if it's in an area where we lack depth, like the striker position. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, maybe, like I was going to say before, the substitution is that maybe he means big acquisition in the sense that a starter, so three starter positions that get filled. But like, like you said, I'm curious what he thinks is is the gaping holes, the, the positions we need to upgrade in. Obviously, striker we need depth, but I'm curious in starting eleven, who he or others may feel. They're there's a shot up coming up. Sorry, there's a shot coming up here at like 65 15 on the stream. And I just love when they show like the the, the, the side view of the coach with the Nord curve in the background bouncing. That's always a I love classic, that shot, dude. Picture. It just gets me every time, man. Next background. If this is a style of play we play for the entire season, it's it's gonna be hard to watch, no doubt. But I, I am confident and maybe overly confident that. We're gonna get to where we need to be. I think if we we the last third. I think defensively we're pretty good. Midfield we're pretty good. The final third is a missing piece in terms of creating consistent opportunities. Obviously, Turtle is a beast. Bulter is a good good sidekick, but you need to have consistent uh, threats, consistent shots, consistent possession in the final third to create anything. And we're not doing that at the moment. That's our biggest weakness, I think, in my opinion, outside of depth. Uh, Justin Player goes down. Didn't see who it was. So do we see where Salazar and Lotsa are lining up? Looks like Salazar is still in the middle. Maybe Lotsa went out left. Looks like Ramosi is saying, I don't know what we're doing. <laughs> All right, free kick, deep free kick for Dresden into the box. Looks like it was offsides anyway, no? It doesn't matter if Frazzle has it. Nope. Shaka player is down. Looks like it's Ovion. Don't know if a Dresden player elbowed him or, or something happened. Or uh, blah, 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 blah. Excuse me. Beer is getting to me now. Ooh, is it an elbow? Is that a red card worthy? Where's VAR? Yeah, can't help but feel like we absolutely need an insurance goal in this one. Um, we always need an insurance goal. <laughs> We're not. I mean, there's, some, there's some games you feel a bit better about it, though, and I feel like, I mean... Yeah, basically this entire second half, for the most part, Dresden's been the more dangerous team. Uh, it, it, we we don't look particularly likely to get something at the moment. Yeah, the only game is that one recent game we won one nothing, and it might have been the game that Toronto scored. Uh, well, last game we scored late. It wasn't that game. It was a game with Toronto with Toronto had the winner, and it may have been the only goal in the game. That's the only game I felt comfortable at one nothing. Um, every other time I've been on pins and needles because I'm. Oh, that's nice. Sorry, down the left hand side. Oh, and he gives it away with a terrible pass. I assume you're talking about Dresden. Yep. Yeah. It was uh, Schroeder, I think. Okay. For them. Nice Not Roven for those time. listening in. Yeah. <laughs> For those of you on the stream, we are streaming on Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. So if you're listening in, thank you. Or watching in, I should say. Thank you for joining the stream as we watch Shaka together. Hopefully to see a record breaker today. But uh, the most important thing oh, is three man. points. Well, you know what? Props props to the keeper, man. Oh, big save by Frazzle. 
Because after after I made the joke about his distribution, he's come up with two big saves now in the second half. Everyone listens um, into this, Jack. Yeah. Yeah, that was marked for a far corner, and he read that clearly. Two big saves. Janko says, how is Schalke doing? We're winning, <laughs> but it's been a pretty even game. Um, the best chances have come from Dresden. Frazzle has made two huge saves in the last, what, 10 minutes, Jack? Um, it's been okay, but we're not creating – the theme of the season is we're not creating enough offensively in the final third. Um, yeah, and Mikhailov, the goal that we did score was a deflection. It wasn't even a proper uh, a yeah. proper goal. So, yeah, we're, yeah. we're probably a little bit fortunate to be in the, in the lead at the moment. Our worst player of the game so far, Mikhailov, is luckily off the pitch for Latza. Um, you would imagine Ranf will come off next, probably for Matriciani. You imagine Perringer is going to come in here in a minute, probably for Bolter, I would imagine. Uh, maybe Salazar. Curious to see where that go with that. But we got a goal kick here for Frazzle. Or in Jack's stream, it might be in the final third. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, seriously, I, I really wouldn't mind to get some Trilanov action going. Um, Charlie says, is Ranful effective? Uh, not particularly. Not in this game. Not in this game. He hasn't been effective since preseason, honestly. <laughs> That's probably just my opinion. I don't think anybody else has, shares that opinion. Um, Cherlinoff is probably someone who needs to come in. Another another Dresden sub, Diet Rabio is coming four off. Four now, right? Diet yeah. Rabio. <laughs> if Rabio went to Dortmund, that's what he would look like. Yannick Stock oh. is his name. I put no Stock in that haircut. Sorry, dead jokes. We were never the team to score three goals in a game, but more like Atletico Madrid just winning by one goal difference. Unfortunately, the big difference there is that Atleti has a good defense and we don't. But we've been struggling. I agree. We we haven't been we haven't been that team since the Junta La Raul days. But you know, uh, we started the season scoring goals though. Teddy when he, when he was up at Moscow was was rocking the all black. So you know we could get like if we brought him back, we'd have a little bit of you know Simeone type vibe on the sidelines. There you now. go. Pretty there sinister. You go. There you go. I think if we can win games like by two goals, like two nothing, I think that's where we want to be. Um, we're we're much better defensively now than we started the season, but still we need it. We need insurance goals. I think I don't feel comfortable without with this one goal lead. We're not that team where we can just set up shop. Man, this right, is Sean. tough to watch. This is tough to watch at the moment. Just, I mean. Yeah. It's not much going on. It's turnovers. Yeah, I mean, we're we're struggling to complete multiple passes. You know, and when we're trying to string yeah. from our center backs to our midfielders, just everything is is long and speculative. And nothing's clean. We're under pressure on like every every pass we try. I think this game is screaming to have Trilinov in there. Janko says, "Yeah, that's what I discussed with my friend today. The one where Kara and Naldo were gone, we just fell apart. Yeah, yeah." Yeah. This is probably the best defense we've had since Karen and Naldo were on the pitch together. We we look like the the least energetic team right now too. We look like we're a little bit tired. Yeah. Um and that would explain the lack of pressing in this game. Normally we press the hell out of the other team. Dresden is the one initiating all the press at the moment and we have no answers for it. Yeah, we started dropping off like fairly early into the first half, which was surprising. Yeah, not a good sign ever, but. <sighs> All right, we're in the 74th minute now. Still one substitution, Mikhailov off, Latza on. It's it's not a good sign that Tarada is as deep as he is right now. Um, I think that kind of tells you everything you need to know about how the, how the build-up's been going. Um, yeah. He's playing like so far wide and so deep consistently to try to come up into pockets of space to receive the ball. And I don't think it's because of the marking of Dresden. I think it's the lack of us doing anything to get him the ball or Bolter, to be fair. Is that a foul? Yep. On Toronto. I was looking at Toronto. And his body structure, I'm like, there's no way this guy can run. But he can move pretty well. He's obviously pretty good with the ball and, and good athleticism. But 
this, it appears just by looking at him like this guy has no athletic ability whatsoever. So the guy who probably doesn't have any athletic ability right here, Mr. Injury Prone. Charlie says, uh, Ronfell and Mikhailov seem to be not as strong as first league. I agree. Uh, just my opinion, not being negative. Just want to move up. We've been defending. We've been scoring. We've been scoring when we can get the ball forward. Seems like we can't get the ball forward again. That's true. 100%. Oh, my God. Are you kidding me with that ball just now? I'm sorry. Oh, you're right. Yeah. I mean, what on earth? You had a guy on a breakaway if you pass it right and it misses Bolter by a mile. Who made that pass? It's like five yards left of him. I mean, it wasn't that difficult to read where he was running. It was closer to the uh, Dresden player than it was to the Schalke player. So sloppy, man. And I think this is what frustrates me, right? We play so If we play, we were playing clean passes, it'd be a different game, I think. We'd still probably be the same score line, but it'd be you know 75% possession for us, and we're not doing that. I mean, no, Dresden's put us under good pressure, yeah, but there's been far too many that have, have been unforced, seemingly, and just kind of poorly weighted balls when, when they're no it's the opposite of what it. we look like against Hanover, right? It was complete dominance in almost every facet of the game, and this game, it's we, we're, we looked inept. Yeah, I'm losing, I'm losing hope that we're gonna be able to do anything here. I might just have to hold out and try to snag this one. No, late goal, Toroda. Come on, late goal, Toroda. He just told me to calm down. That would be hype to uh, to clinch it. Also, what I'm scared about is who will score goals when we promote to the first league. Toronto doesn't look really like a goal scorer in the first game. If the service is there, I think he can score. I think, unfortunately, you know, when, if he were to go to a team that could that had the consistent, you know, uh, passing opportunities, where you're talking about, you know, Bayer, obviously the other black and yellow team, not Dresden. Uh, you know, Bayern. If he if he got the service, I think he'd score. He's not going to create his own goals. That's 100 true. He needs the service. Uh, and at the moment, his last two games, he hasn't really had the service. And I think that's a big reason. And I haven't watched all his games in, in the in the Bundesliga, but I think you know when when any team gets promoted and you stay on that team, it's going to be much more difficult trying to get your opportunities. The defense is better. The winger, everything is better. Everything's faster. They read. They they know the tactics better. It's going to be much more much more difficult to score, and if you don't have, All right, a there's service, a corner. That was a good pass into the box, that was defended out into the corner. Yeah, here we got an opportunity here. Danny Lotz getting forward. I'd like to see that. I'd like to see that. All right, come on. We need some. We need a good service from. All we need is one. Just get get the get the ball somewhere in the general vicinity of uh you know Mr. Torada's head, and we might have something here. Yeah. As the camera pans to uh, throw, do you fancy another Kaminsky goal? I fan, yeah, that's or Bolter. I haven't seen Bolter in a while. There it is. Well done. You called it, not me, my friend. The angry tree. This still looks angry. <laughs> Boom. Just, just, dude, just a near post, you know, kind of glanced on, flicked header back post. Pretty poor, pretty poorly defended. I kind of want to see that replay again. Maybe he was, maybe the defender was, you know, closer to him than I thought, but it, that looked relatively easy for us. Prost. I'll drink to that. No, good shot. I, I went with the, the late change to Kaminsky. You got the bolter shot. I knew it was going to be, it, it would have to have been a big man. And those are the three options, really. So. Yeah, I mean, there's there's no one. I mean, he just slipped into this little pocket of space, and he has nobody on him. That's not think, that's not well defended at all by Dresden there. What I think is going to happen now, I think Schalke is good. Now there's a relief, right? Your two goal lead. That's going to start opening it up here. Maybe see Trelinov come in here. Maybe we finally get Toro to get a goal here. I can see another goal happening for us. No, that's that that's a huge that's a huge goal though, honestly. It's a because huge that goal, that I mean, you don't want to speak. We still have ten minutes left or so, but that almost certainly locks up the result for us. And um, yeah. Dude, I'm telling you, last what's what's our form now? The last six games or so. One, yeah, four yeah. games, four wins four, and five. Yeah, four and five. So it'd be five and six if we win this. Needed that. Needed, we needed that. It was huge. Current standings, like I said, St. Pauli hasn't played yet, but we're tied for first with them in points. Uh, they still got a game today against uh, Hansa Rostock, so we'll see how that turns out. But it's like, no, it's like the Kaminsky goal last game, though. I mean, like ball's able to come into him, and there's no one. 
with a body on him at all. I mean, it's just, it's a little bit too open. Maybe everyone's dedicating their pressure to Tarota and just leaving everybody else open. I don't know. Yo, what happened Ooh. to this cat? Nice volley attempt that was defended out by Schalke. It might be a corner kick, but uh, he I think the two Dresden players took each other out. I think the two Dresden players took each other out. Let's see the replay. Yeah, they did. Oh, he kicked him. <laughs> but the kicker is the one who's hurt, I guess. Knee to the chest or something? I don't know. Oh, two nothing. Beautiful, beautiful. We're in a good spot. I feel a lot better now. I'm not as angsty. See, we're a two nothing type of team. We're not a one nothing type of team. You know, you got some room for error just in case. I mean, look at that. And like, you know, the first time in like 15 minutes, we actually building and get a couple of passes into the box. We went a corner and immediately score off of it. Nice to see. Funny how that um, works. Yeah. Yeah. And this is what I was saying. What, what's Oyan's assist total up to already? Who's? Oyan. Uh, that's five now. He had four going into this game. Yeah. I mean, this guy could easily be on pace for like legitimately like 15 assists this season at some. I mean, yeah. He is um, now in second place in the league in terms of um, assists. Uh, he's tied with Khalid Nari from Dusseldorf on five. Oh, and the two players that I was mentioning about Darmstadt that are equal scorers. You got Luca Pfeiffer, that's a guy I couldn't remember, and Philip Tietz. Nice, really composed uh, sequence on the dribble there from Donny Lotz a second ago to get out of pressure and just kind of find an outlet. Need a little bit more of that from our team in general. It's nice to see him providing that when he gets back yeah. on the pitch. So this is the English Volca Week, if you want to call it. Uh, Wednesday or Tuesday, Tuesday, excuse me, 1860 Munich in the DFB Pokal. And then Friday against Heidenheim will not be a watch along in that one. Uh, and then Darmstadt follows that. But he, look just now, though. Look, I mean, look look where Tarada is picking that ball up. Yeah. It's, I mean. Do you think he wants that goal? I'm saying like, it's, it's not ideal for that to be his starting position no, as, uh, as our boy Flo Flick comes on here for uh, Salad Flo Sar, Flick. I think. Flo Flick locking up shop with a defensive midfielder. I say you bring on Perringer, take off Bulter, get the scene innovation, and try to get another – and bring on Cherlonoff as well. Sebastian Mai minute. onto the pitch. Oh, my. <laughs> All right. Dude, I mean, Zalatsar put it – I mean – He put in work. Props it. But, yeah, put in the shift, man. Of the front three, he was the best, I think, in terms of consistent pressure. Love seeing Flick in the midfield again. We are in the 83rd minute, going towards the 84th. You'd imagine again, a couple more minutes into stoppage time. Dresden playing out in the defensive end right now. Schalke really letting them have the ball. It's pretty cool there. ball in there for them. Kind of an unnecessary corner to give away by Oyan, but I guess he's playing it safe. Yeah. We saw that earlier with Kaminsky as well. Um, at this point, I'd rather be safe than sorry. In one goal game, you don't want to do that, but... What's your, what uh, what's, your what, what's your stream at at the moment? We are at 82, 47, 48, okay. 49. Okay, seven, seven seconds ahead. That's what she said? No. no. Didn't work. It's a stretch. It's a stretch. <laughs> Who do you think was the worst signing in the last five years? Must be Rudy. <laughs> I mean, it, you're, it's going to be difficult to see me disagreeing with any kind of uh, negative Rudy comments anyone could come up with here. So, uh, yeah, I'm fine with that. I would argue, well, Rudy, I mean, Rudy's pretty bad. Hamza Mendiel was pretty bad. Rudy, I mean, for the, for the price, though? Yeah, 16 million or 15 million or something. Yeah, it crazy. has to be Rudy. Yeah. Like I know we played a lot for Konoplyanka, but he got he got a couple goals in there. Paid more than we should have for um, uh, well, his name just escaped me. Never mind. Good talk. Bolter in on goal here. Let's see. You have you have teammates, sir. 
Yep, he wanted the brace. It's all right. Janko, I wonder who you think was the worst signing. You think it was Rudy as well? All right, Justin coming down here. Mai with the ball. Stuffed by Kaminsky. Flick coming up to clean up the clean up the trash there. Better in possession right now. Dude, some of these, stringing some passes. No, some of these decisions though, just like why, why are we suddenly just like playing these in the air? Like there's there's there were ground passes wide there as outlets, and we just gave the ball away again for no reason. Yeah, Charlie, I agree. Uh, of all the signings we've had in recent years, we, it seemed like we overpaid for players, and they never lived up to the hype. Um, it, it, it's been a constant thing. Oh yeah, I forgot about that guy. Um, we probably paid. We are, we overpaid for Benito Raman as well, but at least he had some production for us at times. I mean, Rudy yeah. Rudy just offered nothing in his entire tenure, in my nothing. opinion. Nothing. Nothing. Oop, I think was we paid a lot for him, or it was unfortunate circumstances for him because I think when he went to Cone, he did well, right? And for what I, we we took chance on a player who had one great year, I think it was just one great year for Hoffenheim, um, but he just the team he came upon that had nobody good. The last last season he was our best player up until the injury, uh, and then he kind of fell off it after that. And I mean, it's just been rough circumstances for Marco. I, I, I was at a place for him. Imbolo, yeah, he he struggled at times. He did good, but not good enough for the price. We paid what twenty two million for him. Imbolo, I forget yeah, how much we paid for him. It might have been more like eighteen or something, but yeah, yeah, that was when I was disappointed in too because I I that was one of those guys that I would had been aware of prior to us because sometimes like I mean like so for example like Harit, I hadn't really heard of Harit prior to us signing him. Um, yeah. He wasn't a guy that was like significantly on my radar. Imbolo had been. Um, and so I was right. I was pretty stoked about that signing and uh, yeah. He was at Basel machine, with um, yeah, Shakiri or uh, Mosala. So um, yeah, just disappointing partially because of the injury injuries that happened. Um, wasn't able to kind of like get a consistent foothold, but yeah, also just didn't really deliver exactly on what we thought he was going to. Yeah, uh, Janko said it was twenty two million for Mbolo, ten million dollars per goal. It's pretty expensive. Not as expensive as Torres when he went to Chelsea. One goal, fifty million. There it is. All right, playing out the left hand side. Boulter taking on his defender one on one. Okay, in the box. And turnover. Chupa Motang, yeah. He played well in Paris. No, no Chupa slander in this in this stream. He's gonna make arbitrary decisions like that. You can slander Rudy and DeSanto. Supo Chupo. Super super. Iogo, really another fun, I don't know how he how he parlayed like Schalke into Stoke, into PSG. PSG, into Bayern. It's just the strangest pathway that you've ever seen. But yeah, uh, Janko says he loves Chupo. Also, Janko knows what's up. Yeah. No, I think he was good too. You know who I liked who didn't have much time at Shock was Gerardo. A couple years I was here, him and Raul hooking up. The one goal he beautifully he assisted at, over the top. Was he at Wolfsburg prior to coming to us? Where was he? Uh, I feel like he went to Wolfsburg to an English. No, I don't remember. No, yeah, he was he was he was a good player though. He was Matando, Matando, what was it? Fifteen million for him, something like that. Eleven, I want to say. Eleven. That was like 11 million for an academy kid in a winter window. That was like pure desperation stuff. Yeah. We've had at least two city pickups. One of them, Itakura, is working out right now. Much more so in the handful of games he's played so far than Matano did. Everything about Matano is just like that That goal he scored in the – was it the 3-0 against uh, Leipzig on the road? Yeah. And he scored that final goal, and it's just like – so yeah. well composed and just beautiful finish, and you're like, where was that for more of his time? That was his first goal too, right? Yeah, I don't remember, but it was I think certainly it was the first one second of game of the season. Yeah. All right, Dresden into the box, cleared away by Shelf. Oh man, we are in the 89th minute. We'll see how many stoppage time we're gonna have here in a minute. We still only made what two substitutions? Three-one Leipzig. Yeah, that was beautiful. Yep. 
Kevin Prince Boateng. That was like his 20th team, and it was like his second stint at Schalke or first time at Schalke. Okay, I absolutely, I absolutely despised him when he played for us. He was just like firing shots from outside the box constantly and, and like just seeing possession. There's Bolter for Perringer. Yeah, no one covering Bolter at all. He just like walked out by himself for the goal. Colasina can care the most. Yeah. It's always bitter to see someone who you value so high come back to the team. Because, uh, you know, they're Oh, that was almost a goal. Frazzle yelling at the team. So it was a loose ball around the play, and, and the midfielder just snapped at a shot from yeah, the props, box just wide. Props to, props to Mai, who had come on. That's a yeah. pretty nice reaction hit there. Jack, these uh, I know we still got about another minute or so. Uh, you know, I'm gonna hold my comment to the end of the game. I don't want to jinx anything. This is a sloppy game, though, right? Yeah, it's gonna be a two nothing win, but it's as sloppy as they come. And John, I mean, yeah, you can say that in terms of like maybe his age, but like I just I personally hated his game, and I didn't feel like he was. Uh, as well synced into the team concept going forward as you should have been at the time personally. Yeah, he was, he, I think he was in his prime when he was at Milan, I think. Um, and he kind of got that move to Barcelona because of it. And then eventually came back to us because of it. Uh, by age, he's probably in his prime, but by talent, he, he had lost it already. I think he, he was as good as he was. Yes. He had the talent. He absolutely had the talent, but I think because of the players he had around him, especially at Milan, the reason he looked even better than he was, he had some huge games against Barcelona, uh, in the Champions League, but he's never really a guy who had talent, but he got his head, let his head get in the way, I think. I mean, I was always a fan of Kemper's Boateng, but he's just never never good enough. He's always infamous for breaking Michael Ballack's leg when he was in uh, in England. For a while, that was all he was known for. Right, we got four minutes to stop his Jack. Oof, more than I want to see, but we had big names in 2014 starting to sell off great players to buy young players. Who was the manager that started buying all? The... So we used to have a fairly compact team. I mean, like 23 to 20 to 30 guys. And I want to say it was maybe it was either Keller or Ranya came in and buying, started buying all these players. And it may have been um, Felix Magath. And all of a sudden we had a huge roster of a lot of big names, big names, you know, notable names. And that's really when we started seeing the decline for us. I mean, we had the, the good years of Huntelar and Raul, but we had so many players. Oh, on the roster. my goodness. Sorry. Just, Aaron you know, Aaron? six six inches oh. maybe off, off the head of Tirada on a nice cross. Would have been a late uh, record breaker. Pretty funny. Oh. I mean, that's a yeah. good pass by Perringer. Not bad. Not bad. Just over his head. Yeah, decent, decent effort on the cross. That would have capped the game. I mean, it's already done, but yeah, no, that that second goal. I mean, so we needed that insurance goal. That was absolutely huge because, yeah, so far at least, you know, and now we're well into stoppage time. You know, we've managed to hold on to the clean sheet, but that certainly didn't look like it was a given at the time. And um, yeah, it's it's just so huge to pick up another three points. We've been on this little run. Um, We finally kind of just broke back into that top three, and it would be unfortunate if you know we immediately drop points and kind of like our. If yeah. we, if we can keep this rolling for a couple and kind of solidify that position to give us a little bit of cushion before we drop yeah. out of that zone, that'd be that'd be nice. If we can do that. I think a cushion in this fight to league is huge because it's such a tight league. Um, you need to have any kind of cushion you can. We didn't see that really last season in fight to league until probably the last five games of the season or something. Um, and right now you're looking between first, which is twenty two. I was four. right. Kaminsky. I was right. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I, I did it on the wrong goal, but we got the Kaminsky goal. <laughs> Another late goal by Kaminsky in stoppage time. Uh, you know what? In the 94th minute. 
I actually, I actually do kind of feel for Dresden on that one though, because I think the three nil is uh, is a pretty harsh scoreline on what they've had to offer in this match personally. But... Yeah, yeah. There's no way that if you looked at the statistics or the way we played, if you watched the game, that this is a three nothing game. But Oyan again, two assists. He's one behind the league lead in assists. The guy plays a nice ball. What can you say? Yeah. Nice header. Kaminsky's getting hot. And it's going to be harder and harder to bring Silly Sunny in whenever he's 100% fit. Kaminsky scoring goals. Itakura is a lock in the middle, and Tiao is as well, I think. Hashtag set pieces, my friend. Yeah, that is, that, that is tough. That this was not this was not a three 0 game in my opinion in terms no. of sort of the balance of play. Um, but feel for the goalie too. He said he did a decent game. Game's over. Look at the XG. We finished with less XG than them according to this graphic, and we get one three 0 That's what I'm talking about, man. Like it's you know. Oh, that's funny. Tough. We so what I'm gonna say before I didn't want to jinx it. We are undefeated in these live stream watch alongs. We're now four or five and zero, oh, something like that. So this is a good thing for us. He's gonna have less games on Friday, I think, and we can do more of this. But uh, yeah, three nothing victory goes from Oyan on a deflection, uh, the angry tree, Bultor scoring a goal, and then Kaminsky late again. Uh, three nothing victory here. Turtle second game in a row doesn't score, but it matters not. We are tied for first in points at the moment, tied with. Uh, St. Pauli, who are yet to play. They play Hansa Rostock here in a couple hours. Um, or actually, is it tomorrow, I think. So, yeah. What's your uh, thoughts on the game before we wrap this up? Big. This is going to be a tough, um, like we said, tough fixture congestion this upcoming week. Uh, you know, yeah. just that, that that Tuesday DFB Pokal match followed by the Friday uh, Bundesliga game. So, uh, you know, rotation might come into might come into play uh and yeah. we didn't really rotate the lineup significantly for this one so important that we were able to get the result while we had what was basically you know for the most part our, our typical starting 11 here um outside of you know ranful and uh uh what's the, sorry uh mikhailov uh in the starting lineup yeah. there in the midfield um yeah so big once again i think i think a little harsh to dresden on the balance of play but uh another clean sheet which is becoming a trend for us which is huge something we haven't seen a lot of in the past couple of years uh, and once again um you know making the most of our set piece opportunities just need to continue to work on more more chances created from from open play and possession around the final third and not purely from you know transition moments or from set pieces but uh you know we, we have a decent foundation in terms of having those elements and so now you know there's it's always nice when you know like you know there's room to improve in certain areas and you're still getting results as it is. So yeah, feeling pretty good about things at the moment. Nice, nice win. We've won five in, in the last six games, all five games by way of shutout. Um, yeah. You can't ask for much more than that other than Toronto finally breaking that record. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's been an interesting run. We're getting better in most aspects of the game minus the final third. Um yeah, it's it's a decent result. the The scoreline flatters our play hundred yeah. percent. But you know, three nothing, another shutout. Itakura that's coming. That's the thing. Even in a match where you know, like they, they really Dresden grew into it and kind of had the better, I think, possession around our box. They they weren't really able to create too many clear cut opportunities, even when they did get the ball into those areas. So you know, our, our defense when it came down, a bend not break type situation. Where you know we're not not able to keep them out of the midfield as much as we would like, but once they get down into that, and we, we kind of bunker in and are able to keep the clean sheet, um, and the whole team running down to uh, to, to celebrate for the Nord Curve right now. So you love as to see they that. should, um, as they should. Yeah, and it's nice to see a team you know being supported by the crowd and instead of it being a little bit of a combative relationship as it has been <sighs> at times in recent seasons. So um, feels good. It does feel good. It does feel good. And uh, let's so, okay. Let's look. Let's go through the lineup and give our scores one to ten, and then we'll wrap this up. Sure. Uh, Frazzle in goal. Uh, what's your rating of him? Uh, you know, I have to give him an eight, honestly, just because when uh, you know, the most important part of the goalkeeper responsibility, obviously, for me is shot stopping, and had a couple of big saves in the second half. So yeah, we'll yeah, do well, him within a short amount of time too. So yeah, no, I like that shot. Uh, I will go with eight as well. Uh, Malik Tiao. Seven. I don't know. Yeah. I thought he was solid. Didn't have too many moments that were standout moments for me, but uh, no significant mistakes. I would say the same scoreline for Itakura as well. What are your thoughts on Itakura? Um, yeah, I'd, I'd go seven as well. I think that's fine. Kaminsky, seven point five for me with that goal. Yeah, it kind of has to be. Um, yeah, I, I would agree with that. Seven point five eight with the goal. All right, Victor Paulson. 
six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, I, I agree. I, I think he did much. He did contribute a lot defensively. Offensively, he was non-existent. Basically, uh, I agree with that. Rodful. Uh, six maybe four and a half five maybe even for me i just don't uh, think he offered a whole lot in in this game for the most part yeah i won't argue that <laughs> uh salazar i'm a uh, salazar i would give him a seven yeah i, I will too work. i mean just for the work rate um and, and you know some of the things he's able to uh, extend possessions when, when we're not um operating too smoothly yeah uh thomas oyan he's got to be 8.5 with two assists. Yeah, nine. Goal and two assists. Yeah. Nine. Yeah, no, I agree with that. I agree with that. I'll go with that. Mikhailov, two. Three, four for me, <laughs> unfortunately. I mean, not trying to yeah. hate on the kid, but yeah, not not the best game. No, it wasn't. With the yellow, didn't help at all. Uh, Bulter got the goal at the end. Uh, yeah, I gave him like a 7.5 or an 8, probably. Um, you know, it's difficult to judge both the strikers. Not a lot of service, but, you know, Bulter had several nice moments um, outside of the goal as well um you know maybe some bad decisions in the final third in terms of you know going for it himself but layoff but was was involved at times and definitely seemed yeah. to be you know forcing the issue and trying to maximize the opportunities he did have yep i'll give him a seven uh tarota very uninvolved i don't know if it was all his fault i give him a six i guess yeah i mean if, if i gave you know bolter like a seven and a half or an eight i'd give i'd give tarota probably like a six and a half or a seven but that's not as much his fault. He 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 definitely put work in and was dropping deep, trying to make things happen and link up. So he had a, he had a, he had a solid game for me as well. Yeah, uh, Perringer and Flick really didn't have that much action, but Latza yeah. had about 25, 30 minutes. Uh, any scoreline for Latza? Um, six I'd half, probably seven. go like in like the six and a half seven range as well. Yeah. Had a couple of nice moments. Got um, you know, got off the pitch. Was involved in that corner that gave us the uh, the Bolter goal and everything, and had some some composed moments in possession as as well when we needed to calm things down uh, late in the match. So you know, decent, uh, decent, very small sample from him. Okay, no, I agree with that. All right, that's gonna put a bow on this one. Uh, we win three nothing, a game that the scoreline flattered us tremendously, but we got the win and the shutout nonetheless. Um, onward and upward, tied for first in points as of this moment. We'll see what St. Pauli does tomorrow, but uh, the trend is good, and the watch-alongs are good as well, undefeated. So let's keep this going. Uh, one last look at the chat. Chat says St. Pauli is not going to let up. We have to keep pushing no injuries. Yeah, St. Pauli is for real this year, I think. I think they're the, the main target this year. Uh, but, yeah, um, let's wrap this one up. Uh, we're going to be doing our podcast, I guess, Monday night. Good for you, Jack? Yeah, probably. As of now, yep. I agree, yeah. So look for us maybe possibly Monday night, 8.30 Eastern time, U.S. time. We'll do our podcast then. But we're going to wrap this up. This is a Saturday night, Saturday, whatever you want to call it. And uh, we won another game. So yeah, see you guys switch soon. over to for Formula One qualifying now. But uh, thanks for hanging out, everybody. Good to see some of you. And uh, another nice result. Yeah. Glue golf. Mm -hmm.